future. <laughs> you see, no more can you complain, doctor, that your sick have no beds to lie on. There are their beds. <laughs> Plenty air. <laughs> Springy, like a mattress, huh? <laughs> you know, like? Oh, yeah, sure. As you say, they're nice, springy. Plenty of ventilation. What more can a man ask to die on? <laughs> you see, doctor, we know how to look after our guests in Korea. <laughs> Agent. How's the leg? I haven't been thinking about it much today. I think I'd like to sit down. Ferguson. Could you have kept it out of the dirt? I have no more bandages. I'm sorry. I, I suppose I could have. I'll wash it. You've got to keep your trouser off that leg. As if that'll matter in all this filth. Now, I asked that swine today if I could go into the forest. I, I thought I might be able to find some plant or herb out of which I could make something. He just laughed. <laughs> Three more died today. Why not let them die? Now, don't say that. Do you hear? The only weapon we have left against these animals is life. We've got to live, all of us. Look, Paul, you have your talent, your music. They must not kill that. And I've got my children. Johnny and Libby. And Mom and Dad and Meg. What a wonderful life to go back to. Tell me about them again. Well, you are a dreamer, aren't you? Nothing I haven't told you about. Well, well, show me Johnny and Livy again. <laughs> Livy and Johnny. And Libby's kisses were always so wet that you had to wipe your face. She had a rag dog, a cold wolf. <laughs> and the stuffing was always coming out of it. I must live through this. Better than man must never have them. Never. I'd sooner. You've never told me anything about your wife. Well, no, sir, there's nothing to tell. Doc! It's Klein. You better hurry. Uh, what can I do? It's nothing but my hands. Yeah. <laughs> 
English, aren't you, Paul? Yes, sir. But I became naturalized before I enlisted. No relatives in this country? No, sir. Oh, that's too bad. I was hoping you might have someone close to you in this area. See, Paul, the committee feels that we've tried every therapy here. Our job is done. Now it's up to you to try and adjust yourself to your own surroundings. Face the outside world. Try again to live as a happy, useful citizen. This won't be easy at first, so we'll take in small doses. Yes, sir. Well, Paul, this weekend is yours. You may go where you like, do whatever appeals to you. You think you're ready? Yes, sir. I'd, I'd like that very much. All right. Get along with you. Report back to us at 8 o'clock Monday morning. Is that all, sir? That's all. Oh, doctor, here's Mr. Clinton's card. Oh, yes. Take this. And if you need any of us, just call. Good luck. Thank you, sir. little town, isn't it? You'll like it here. There's my home. Exactly as I told you it would be. 397 Woodlawn, Ambersport. You'll like it here. You'll like it here. Remember the key I gave you? It fits that clock. It's a comfortable room, isn't it? And it has so much love in it. So much love. Remember that? I won it at the fair when I was 10, throwing pennies into a saucer. And Alice is here, too. But I don't have to tell you that's Alice, do I? That's Alice. That's Alice. You never knew me when I looked like this, did you? Clean, healthy, and very, very happy. That seems long ago. So very long ago. Play it. I'll be right beside you. Play it. was with Adrian. Adrian? Forgive me for walking in here like that, but the door was open. Do you always just walk in whenever you find a door open? You see, I know this house through Adrian. Every bit of it. All of you. Meg. Adrian's kid sister. I'm 18. You play beautifully. That was Adrian's favorite. We used to hum that. And we said if we ever got back together, that would be the first thing we'd play. 
And you're Adrian's mother. And you are Mrs. Paul Quentin's mother. Then you, Adrian. You're both exactly as I've always pictured you. Oh, it, it was good of you to come. I promised him I would. Greg, take his coat. Please, won't you sit down? I do hope you'll forgive me. I shouldn't have walked in here like this. I think you had a perfect right to. You must have known Adrian very well. I knew him better than anyone I've ever known all my life. Have you? Did he send a message? Everything he told me about you was a sort of message. There was one thing, though. Yes? It was just before he died. It was this. I promised him I'd do that. Thank you, Paul. You mustn't cry, you know. He wouldn't like that at all. He was always saying, you must never give in. Mother, Paul knows this house as though he'd lived in it. Yes, I've, I've seen it so often in my mind. I've known it for so long. The piano, the grandfather clock, You've let it run down. He always used to wind it. Yes, he always carried the key. And he, he took it with him. He gave it to me to bring back. May I? This is wonderful. It's exactly as he always said it would be. Oh, my dear boy. I do hope you'll be able to stay with us for a few days. I'd like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I... May I have Adrian's room? Well, of course. Why not? Meg will take your things right up. Oh, I must go over and tell Alice right away. Alice? Well, doesn't she live here? I know Alice has her own home. Children. Well, the children are with her. But I must see them. I must. You see, uh, I only have till Sunday. Well, they're quite near. You mustn't excite yourself. You look very tired, Paul. You've been ill, haven't you? Yes, I, I have, but I'm all right now. It's just the excitement of coming home. Yes, of course it is. And now, before you go up, I'd like you to meet Adrian's father. Oh, is he home so early? Home? Oh, you see, he had a stroke the day he received the telegram. But he's much better now, and I know he'll be so glad to see you. James. Yes, dear? This is a friend of Adrian. He was with Adrian in the army. My name is Paul Quentin. And there's the ship. Yes. My boy built that. You're Jody, aren't you? Jody, this is Paul Quentin, a friend of Adrian. Adrian said that the first meal we'd have when we came home would be your fried chicken. I can manage that. And for dessert? Well, Jody knows, don't you? Yes. But we want to hear you say it. Hot peach cobbler would make it perfect. Of course. And now you must go to your room and rest for a little while. Jody will show you. I know the way. Oh, this is rather wonderful, isn't it? <coughs> Almost like having Adrian back.
Is he going to stay with us, Mary? Well, I've asked him to stay over the weekend. his set of carved chessmen and his collection of Indian flints. There should be a bag of golf clubs in that corner and all his books. They all went over to Thornfield. Thornfield? Yes, his and Alice's house. Oh, he, he didn't tell me about that. You know, Adrian was very proud of you. I was of him too. He said you were pretty. I think you're beautiful. Not really, but where do you see Alice? I've seen her picture. Don't you think she's beautiful? <laughs> yes, I suppose so. She's not only beautiful to look at, she's a wonderful person. Adrian didn't tell me much about her. After Dad had his stroke, Alice took over the bookstore. She's been running it for us ever since. And she doesn't have to, you know. She has plenty of money of her own. Tell me about yourself. I'm still in college. And then what? Oh. You'll get married. Nobody as beautiful as you could stay single for long. Oh, I can run pretty fast. What do you do? Well, I, I was going to be a musician. Concert pianist. Then conducting, perhaps. What? Aren't you going to go on with it? Well, I should think you'd have a great future. Future? For me? Why not? Anyone who plays as well as you shouldn't be allowed to do anything else. Well, I'll, uh, I'll leave you alone for a while. How would you like to go swimming tomorrow? I'd love to, but I don't have anything to swim in. Well, some of Adrian's things are still here. I'll bring them to you. All right. Okay. This is Paul. You played that very beautifully. It was a favorite of Adrian's. Yes, I know. You just missed a wonderful treat. I heard some of it. Well, now that we're all together, let's uh, sit down. Come sit by me, my boy. Now, Paul, can you tell us about Adrian? What do you want to know? We never heard anything of the years he was a prisoner. We received no letters. Did you? What? Did any letters get through to you? No. We never stayed in one place for long until we got to the last one. Now, Paul, could, uh, could Adrian receive medical supplies. Supplies? We had nothing but what we stood up in, nothing. Not even food sometimes. 
If it hadn't been for Adrian, I don't think any of us would have lived. When we wanted to die, he would scorn us and lash us with his tongue. And when we had to die, I, I never met anyone like him. He used to talk for hours about you and this house until I knew almost as much about it as he did. He gave me this home with his words. And I used to live it in my mind. I could live through a whole day, from morning till night, every meal, everything. I believe that was what kept me going and kept me alive. He was a sort of saint, both terrifying and comforting. You can't tell about a saint in words. You can save your tears. He'd have had no use for them. He said to me once that the only weapon we had left against the evil around us was life. He said we had no right to doubt or to falter for a moment. He said that was the great sin, to give in. Paul, were you with him when he died? Yes. He died hard. He fought to the last inch. James. I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you, my boy. Thank you. I'm glad you came here. I can manage. Can you complain, Doctor, that your sick have no beds to lie on? <whistles> there are their beds. <laughs> Plenty air. <laughs> Springy, like a mattress, huh? <laughs> you know, like? Oh, yeah, sure. As you say, they're nice springy. Plenty of ventilation. What more can a man ask to die on? <laughs> you see, Doctor, we know how to look after our guests in Korea. <laughs> oh. Oh, Adrian. How's your life? I haven't been thinking about it much today. I think I'd like to sit down. Ferguson. Could you have kept it out of the dirt? I have no more bandages. I'm sorry. I, I suppose I could have 
I'll wash it up. You've got to keep your trouser off that leg. As if that'll matter in all this filth. Now, I asked that swine today if I could go into the forest. I, I thought I might be able to find some plant or herb out of which I could make something. He just laughed. <laughs> Three more died today. Why not let them die? Now, don't say that, do you hear? The only weapon we have left against these animals is life. We've got to live, all of us. Look, Paul, you have your talent, your music. They must not kill that. And I've got my children. Johnny and Libby. And Mom and Dad and Meg. What a wonderful life to go back to. Tell me about them again. Well, you are a dreamer, aren't you? Nothing I haven't told you about them. Well, well show me Johnny and Libby again. Libby and Johnny. And Libby's kisses were always so wet that you had to wipe your face. But she had a rag dog called Wolf. <laughs> and the stuffing was always coming out of it. I must live through this. Better than Van must never have them. Never. I'd sooner. You've never told me anything about your wife. Well, that's right. There's nothing to tell. Doc! It's Klein. You better hurry. Uh, what can I do? It's nothing but my hands.
Jim. 